What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I wanna share a quick scene and compositing walkthrough of one of my favorite shots in our new City Builder 3D add-on for Blender space kit. As usual, this 3D scene and compositing walkthrough is not really a tutorial, but should give you some ideas on how you can composite some of these elements into your own live action shots. In the future on this channel, I'll be doing the scene walkthroughs of all the visual effects shots in that trailer, so stay tuned for that as well. And let us know if you'd like to see any specific visual effects tutorials in the comment section below on the channel as well. Anyways guys, let's get started. As you can see here, this is our compositing setup. Now most of the shots in the trailer we composited inside of Blender. However, for this specific shot, I decided to use After Effects because I'm a little bit more comfortable compositing 2D elements in this software rather than using Blender, mostly because I can play back with my 2D elements in real time within the timeline. Of course, before getting into After Effects, I had to render out our CG spaceship here inside of Blender so that we could import that data for compositing. So I'll go ahead and open up Blender. This is our scene inside of Blender and we've just imported our space fighter asset from our City Builder 3D add-on. As you can see we have the space kit right here. Go ahead and close this and as you can see here it's a pretty basic setup for this shot in 3D. I just matched the perspective of our CG camera to the live action shot as best I could and I've put our focal length for this camera around 24 millimeters. That seems to be about right. It could be a little bit longer. It could be like a 32 or 35 as well but it looked pretty good and since our element is in the deep background and our camera is isn't moving it doesn't matter quite as much but of course perspective does matter quite a bit and that's why I've lined up our CG camera inside of Blender to round where the live action camera would be in the 3D world. So you can see I've just lined up where the ground would be accordingly and then I've just placed this ship in the deep background. Now before rendering out the spaceship for compositing it was important to at least have similar lighting on the CG spaceship render. So I've just added a basic HDRI to the scene with kind of a similar cloud setup. You can see if I just go to render view and I'll just go ahead and turn off transparent film. We can kind of see the clouds are somewhat similar to our live action shot. The ground is of a similar color and it's still, you know, a cloudy environment. And then once we have this soft light, as long as the CG isn't super reflective, we can then color grade the CG element to match the footage a bit better. So at least we have some photorealistic lighting on our asset. And then in compositing, we can match the color tones of our asset to the plate a little bit better. So I've just added a basic HDRI here and lined up our ship to where it would be in the shot. And then I've also just added a very basic ground plane to our scene as well to act as a holdout to kind of act as if the ship is buried here in the sand as if it's just crashed. I've also made the ground plane the same general color as the ground in our live action shot. So you can see the base color of our ground plane is just this kind of sandy color. If I turn on the ground plane for a second here, you'll be able to see that. So you can see it's just a very basic sand color. So now we'll have a little bit more realistic lighting from below the spaceship as well. Now, obviously, if you want this to be even more accurate, you can project the live action plate onto this ground plane and you'll have even more photorealistic reflections. If the camera was moving around this asset a bit more, we might have to recreate some of the background geometry here as well and then project onto that to have even more realistic lighting on this element. But sometimes, depending on the complexity of your shot, you can actually get away with a fairly simple setup like this. So I've rendered out two view layers here inside of Blender. I've rendered out a foreground layer, which includes our spaceship combined beauty pass in addition to our ambient inclusion here. And then I've also rendered out our background shadow pass view layer here, which as you can see here only contains the shadows of our spaceship on the ground plane here. So I just wanted to have that data to work with separately in order for more control in the compositing process. So I've rendered both of these view layers on a multi-layer OpenEXR sequence for more control in the compositing process within After Effects. Alright guys, so inside of After Effects, we have a fairly simple and straightforward composite here. This is our final composite without the color grade that we've added inside of Adobe Premiere, but I'll just go through the layers that we added to blend in our crash spaceship into the shot and grunge up our environment a bit. So these are all of our different layers that we've comped onto our shot. I'll just kind of turn them off here and go through everything one by one. So first things first, we have our live action shot, which is our actor here on the ground. Then I've extracted our beauty pass from our Blender exported multi-layer opening XR sequence and to blend in our ship into the deep background a bit more since our focus is on our character here i've just added a little bit of camera lens blur to blend it into the shot so it wasn't too sharp here in the background as you can see if i turn off that blur really quick it gets a little bit uncanny as it's too sharp compared to the rest of our background here so i've just added a little bit of blur to help blend it into the shot a bit better and then i've also tinted our ship to match the color of our ground a bit better so this is something you can do when your elements are in the deep background and i've actually covered this before on on the channel when it comes to like adding atmospheric fall off and things like this but um, what you can do is you can just add a tint to your element 
and just tint it toward the color of everything else around the element that you're adding. So in this case, all of this ground here is kind of a brown tannish color. So I've just tinted 6% toward that color. So you can see if I go all the way up, we have something like this, but then we can slowly dial it back. And it's almost as if the light is bouncing off the environment and then hitting our element here. So that's just a little really quick trick that you can use to help composite distant elements into your shot and help match the lighting a bit better. If you didn't recreate the entire environment when you did the lighting on the CG element. So adding a little tint there, then I've extracted our ambient occlusion pass from our open EXR sequence as well. And I've just overlaid that on our element so you can see by itself here what our ambient occlusion pass looks like. So it's just kind of that pass that'll help deepen the shadows a bit and help integrate it into the environment a bit more. And I've just brought down the opacity on this ambient occlusion to just give it a very subtle hint of shadows to the details of our spacecraft like so. After adding our ambient occlusion, I then wanted to add some damage to our spaceship to help integrate it into the environment a bit more. So I just have these two damage elements that have comped onto our spaceship and I literally Really just slap them on here to help give a little bit of variation within the spaceship. I use the multiply blend mode here on both of them to just help blend them into the shot a bit better. And then finally, I started integrating more of the actual live action plate over top of our spacecraft as well, because I wanted to actually make our spacecraft appear like it's actually buried in the sand here as if it actually crashed in this environment. So I've just taken some of our live action background here and just painted over different parts of the spaceship. So you can see if I just isolate these elements by the themselves and you can see I've even varied the opacity of these elements as well to just kind of feather in where the dirt would be on our spacecraft as if it had crashed so you can see here with our spaceship and then you know once we have it all integrated it looks like this it's looking much better than our original so just painting over a little bit of the live action plate on top of that scene where the CG meets the live action can help a lot and is a pretty simple effect to do inside of After Effects or another 3d compositing software of your choice. So I've done that here to help integrate it into the scene. Next, I added some fire elements kind of on that seam where the CG meets the live action. I've actually added these fire elements here for two reasons. One, because I wanted to make the environment feel more chaotic as if the ship had actually crashed and there's still some fire from the crash itself, but also because it helps to further integrate that CG into the live action plate by hiding that seam where the two meet. So I've added those fire elements here. I've again added some camera lens blur in addition to some color correction and tint effects to help integrate them into the plate. So you can see here on this fire element, we just turn these off. You can see it's really sharp at first. Then I've just added some camera lens blur to integrate it into the background a bit better Then some curves to brighten it up a bit and bring out a little bit of the red. And then I've also added a tint to again, help integrate it into the live action shot a bit better. So I've added those fire elements. Then of course, where there's fire, there's often smoke as well. And when it comes to smoke, I often like to add layers of detail of different types of smoke. So in this case, I've added some wisp elements, which are kind of like some smaller scale detail smoke. So you can see here, it's kind of just this low, slow move smoke here as if heat is rising off of this area and then I've also added a little bit more smoke through this atmospheric element here and I've also you know added some very basic masking around these elements as well because without these masks you know you can see the hard edges where the elements meet the live action plate so I've just added some very basic masking on all of these elements as well so even like these wisps and such I've added some masks to help blend everything together that are feathered accordingly so we can just kind of show these by themselves here maybe like so finally I just have one more layer of smoke detail here on the right side of frame. So I've just duplicated the same atmospheric element and offset the timing just to add a little bit of smoke here in the deep background on the right of frame as well. And finally, I've added a fire foreground element just to make the shot a little bit more interesting. And then of course, I've color graded this guy as well. I've added a little bit of blur because it's so close to the camera, it should be a little bit defocused there. And then I've adjusted the curves as well to make it a little bit more orange and color corrected it with a little bit of tint to make sure it was integrated into that environment a bit better. Finally, on these last few layers, we've added some Lumetri color for color grading, as well as some Gaussian blur and noise to add a little bit of a film look to the final shot. And I actually didn't end up using these settings. I exported like this and inside of Adobe Premiere, we color graded accordingly. So you can see we've kind of desaturated the shot in addition to increase the coolness of everything to just create a little bit more gritty and interesting feeling to the final image. Anyways, guys, that is it for this video. Hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're interested in more visual effects and filmmaking content, and I'll see you next time.